नमस्कार एडवंचा या इच्छा कार्य वही तुम जी सगले इच्छा स्वागत आज हम जी बरोबर अशे गेस्ट आसाद जंची वर्क करने दियो बाजे हमें गरज ना हम जी बरोबर आसाद रेमो फर्नांडेस से फर्स्ट टाइम अशे वर्क करने दियो चीज दिस ताकि गोइंचा इलेक्शन आ बितो इलेक्शन आइकॉन मुन तुम्ही काम करता हाउ इज़ द फीलिंग वे प्रमोद थैंक यू द फीलिंग इज़ वन ऑफ यू नो लाइक आई सेड द अदर डे द फीलिंग इज़ वन ऑफ रिस्पांसिबिलिटी आई मीन ऑफ कोर्स इट्स एन ऑनर ऑफ कोर्स इट्स इट्स ऑलमोस्ट लाइक अ टाइटल बट इन मोर देन दैट आई प्रेफर टू सी इट एस अ रिस्पांसिबिलिटी हाउ डिड दिस हैपन हाउ डिड दिस टेक प्लेस वेल आउट ऑफ आउट ऑफ द ब्लू आई गोट अ फोन कॉल और दे विजिटेड मी एंड दे टोल्ड मी दैट यू नो या माय नेम वाज वन ऑफ द नेम्स व्हिच वाज दे सजेस्टेड एंड दे सिलेक्टेड मी सो इट जस्ट हैपन आउट ऑफ द ब्लू लाइक दैट या so it's it's so important for us to vote and it's so important for us to vote you know wisely and responsibly and although i had you know different views about the subject in the past and i still do but now that i'm given this responsibility i would like to carry it uh, you know seriously how different views different views i i think like many other people you know i was frustrated about about the quality of our candidates so some time back I was thinking that the best, and I was even advocating it. You know that the best solution would be for all the people. You know, not only of Goa. Okay, let's just stick to Goa. Mm. All the people of Goa to unite and refuse to vote mm. if we found that the candidates were not good enough. Mm. But even at that time, when I was advocating this, or when I was thinking about this, I also said that unfortunately this will not work. It's an idealistic idea. But why will it not work? Number one, it requires unity, yeah. and I don't think we Goans are known for unity, <laughs> you know. So even if like-minded people unite, those who are the chumchas of parties, mm. they will not stay without voting. Mm. They will go and vote for their party, and that will, you know, you know destroy the whole you know, purpose. Your views have changed now, or you are you are taking this as a bigger responsibility? No, no. Even at that time, this is what I said. But a lot of people conveniently forget the second part of what I said. They only remember the first part, where I said that it is better not to vote and force them to change the candidates. But there was a but even at that time. I said, but if you don't vote, we require this unity, and this unity, unfortunately, I don't think we have. Politicians always argue that uh, ultimately our candidates are a reflection of society. Do you believe in that? I think. The politicians are you saying that? Yes, politicians say that. Why are you blaming us? We are just your reflection. We come from you. I think the candidate. Yeah, but you know, from us, from society, there are many different kinds of people in society, right? Every society has crooks. Every society has good people. Every society has you know lazy people who could not be bothered one way or or another. Unfortunately, in India, or you know, recently I've realized it's all around the world. Mm. The the candidates who actually take the trouble of standing for elections and everything are the crooks, mm. mostly, mm. mostly the crooks, you know. And it has risen to such an extent that all the choice that we have is between one crook and another crook, <laughs> you know. You know, somebody who is crooked and somebody who is more crooked. It's not uh, about one. And nowadays there are some candidates who are standing who are at least up till now. Mm. I feel that they are truly. You know, there for the love of Goa, mm. and not for the love of their Swiss bank account, mm. which I'm sure they don't even have. Mm. And one never knows what these people will change into after some years if they get into power, because power corrupts. The thing is for us to remain, you know, aware and alert. And and if we can, I mean, vote your these people who are honest you know, today mm. into power. Tomorrow, if they change and if they get corrupt, vote them out tomorrow. Mm. So it's our duty to be always alert and always take the trouble of. Anna Azare propagated the idea of right to reject. Yes. Do you support it? Absolutely, absolutely. That is the greatest thing, mm. and it's a right which has always existed, mm. but which the politicians obviously have never made us aware of. In fact, this is one of the questions, one of the two questions I wanted to ask the election commissioner the other day at the press conference. But all of a sudden, they had to leave because of the flight. Mm. So I was not able to ask these two questions. Number one was to kindly, you know, educate the people or, or give their views about the right, to, you know, to reject. And number two is you know, whether there is anything at all that, that we can do about the vote banks, mm. about the migrant vote banks, which our politicians, mm. 
and our candidates you know have built up over here i remember in 2007 election i think you were voting in one of the booths in shivali mudli and you had read a nice message that i am standing in a queue and i have a dilemma whether to vote for the narkasur or the devil yes. is, is that dilemma still there well of course of course it is there you know because uh, we have the same age which which hasn't come just like that it has come through hard truth you know that one, and i shall not name names here you know, but that one is corrupt the other is communal the two big c's uh, you know the bad c's the corruption and, and communalism in goa i think the communalism issue has been almost non existent mm. at least up till now and uh, the corruption has been absolutely existent yeah. but as an icon for ethical voting i'm not supposed to you know to advocate or even say who is better who is worse so i shall you know leave it at that and i feel and what i would like to say is look into your candidate take the trouble yeah. i will uh, i would like to ask each voter it's up to us to take the trouble here yeah. mm. it's not about being blind and just saying okay i have always been for this party my father and my mother have always how will you define ethical voting remo ethical voting is for example you know voting without accepting a bribe from somebody ethical voting is voting for the betterment of goa and not of your own you see because if a crook comes to power a lot of people you know nowadays prefer a crook in power so the people are corrupt you know corruption has gone full circle we only blame the politicians saying that they are corrupt we the people have become corrupt we prefer a corrupt person in power why because he will allow he create shortcuts for us he create shortcuts for us which we want mm. we the people many of us we actually want licenses for that illegal construction for that illegal business we want to start we want to you know get away without you know responsibilities you know such as uh, a purification plant you know factory you know yeah. we want to you know discharge all the all the pollution into the nearest stream or river or sea and uh, so we actually prefer a corrupt you know politician in power so ethical voting it is simple every religion says you must love god before yourself mm. and uh, it is about loving goa before mm. loving ourselves before loving ourselves you know i mean kennedy has have we become uh, too much self centered a- absolutely and uh, and i think it's all over the world you know number one consumerism number two the corporate you know, everything is corporate ruled in the world of today you know the politicians fielded are backed by corporates and corporates let's face it are business organizations and in a business organization the bottom the bottom line is profit it's not idealism it's profit so obviously if the whole if our lives are ruled you know, by profit in making organizations then we ourselves become uh, yeah we will lose we will lose ideas and we will also only run after profits uh, many people say that uh, you you have always been speaking about social issues you have always been your music has always had that social uh, content into it of late many people say that remo is becoming too much negative i don't know about negative there was one song of mine which is a lament it's called india i cry yeah. now that one was a you know was a lament you know whether it is you want to look at it as negative or whether you want to look at it as realistic is up to you is up to the people you know because it is easy to say let us be positive let us be positive you know that too much positive you know too much positivity can be very harmful because we are so you know happy saying everything is going to be all right and let's go back to sleep so being positive uh, you know we use in being positive as an excuse in for our lethargy if you wake up and if we say that things are negative today goa is not going goa is gone mm. if we say that and if we wake up and if we try to change it for the better then it is yeah, yeah that negativity you know can be used in a positive way but if we keep on saying let us save goa we will save goa man we've been saying that for over a quarter century mm. 
over a quarter century and I was shocked myself when I was writing that song. I went, no, before that when I was doing a new version yeah. of Goa, Goan, Gone, Goa. I was shocked when I went back to my recording journals and I saw that the original version was done in 83 mm. and that it was over a quarter century mm. ago. And we are still, and now we are waking up. Still here to create another version of it. And now we are waking up and saying save you know, Goa. That was a time when the rape of Goa started. When people look at you, people uh, try to get positive energy from you. Uh, your music takes them away from their difficulties, their sufferings and your music takes them into a different world, your own world. When Remu comes out and says these things so bluntly, it, it hurts many people. Good. I'm glad it hurts because it is time we woke up, no? That is what I'm trying to do now because all this time I was saying, let us do something, let us do something. Mm. Nobody woke up, you know, nobody really woke up. Mm. And I feel that even paints a picture which is rosy just to give a positive feeling. I mean, I, I just said it all, you know. Yeah. On the contrary, it acts like a lullaby, it acts like an opium. Mm -hmm to make everybody feel that don't worry, everything is going to be all right. Do you think Anna's movement will make some difference? Of course it will make some difference. But it's all up to us. It's not, see, to keep that is what, is up to us. you know, yes, it's all up to us, you know, we're saying Anna's movement, first of all, mm. that is the fallacy. Mm. Calling it Anna's movement is, movement is a fallacy. We have to say our movement, mm. will our movement work? Mm. You know, because Anna is not the only one who is suffering from corruption. You and I are suffering from corruption, perhaps much more than Anna. Mm. Anna is living a simple Gandhian life. You know, corruption does not affect him that much. Mm. His taxes and his businesses, he's not a corporate person mm. or a thing. It is affecting you and me much more than Anna. Mm. And yet, Anna is there fighting our battle for us. So it has to be our battle, not Anna's. Uh, last time we saw you directly into a social agitation was during Goa Pachawabhya. Uh, after that, you are off social scene that way actively. Why? Well, there's no particular reason, but I have been in the scene by composing songs yeah, and putting them out absolutely. and putting them out on the net. It so happened that whenever there were Anna Hazare, uh, you know, oriented meetings in Goa, I was out of Goa. Mm. Every time it so happened, it was just a coincidence, mm. you know. And uh, otherwise you would have participated. I would have absolutely participated. Mm. Yeah, only in the meetings which are coming directly from Anna Hazare and Kiran Bedi's mm. uh, in group, mm. okay? Not from the political parties who tried to ride on the bandwagon, mm. you know? I attended one such meeting <laughs> and after going there I realized that it was full of a politically you know, motivated okay. uh, in group. And that's when I became very wary about attending meetings, about, about attending meetings, about attending meetings. yes. yes. <laughs>